These little Lenovo Think Centers are great little PCs. You can pick them up for cheap, and they're great for just all around computing, anything from just web browsing at home, or you can even get them to uh, run retro emulators and be great little PCs for slapping inside a arcade machine or just playing some retro console games. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the specs of these and what can differ inside them. There's different processors, of course, different RAM and, and hard drives. And we'll talk about uh, what the different models mean and uh, which ones are the best. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. And today we're going to be talking about the Lenovo Think Centers. I've got a mixture here of M73s and M93s uh, and M93Ps. And we'll talk about some of the differences. Uh, the main differences we're going to be talking about, of course, are going to be the processors that are inside these. So there's several different processors that these came with um, from, from low spec up to high spec. And, and we're going to talk about the difference of those and what they can mean performance-wise on the PCs themselves. Now, all in all, you can pick these up on eBay anywhere from 50 to 150 bucks, depending on what you find and what they come with. And they're going to have various different numbers for their processors and stuff, so at least I want you guys to understand what they mean and which one to pick. If they're all right around the same price, which one of these to, to pick up? So what I've got in front of me here is a couple different i5s and a couple different i7s. And I've got one of these open just to show you how easy it is to open it up and, and work around in it. We've got a, a hard drive right on top here. That's easy to uh, swap out. And then two screws um, underneath that is going to be your RAM. And we can pop out two RAMs and throw in some new RAMs. So in a different video, which I'll link right up here, I go ahead and take one of these apart and show you how to get the... Uh, get the RAM and the SSD swapped out and because some of these will come with either very little RAM or no RAM some will come with really small hard drives or no hard drives at all um, sometimes these things come right off the lease and they just rip the hard drives right out and then sell them for cheap so and in that video we'll show you how to do that in this video we're just going to talk about the differences in the and the specs so before we get into the differences let's talk about what they are all similar with so they're all going to be uh, a fourth gen, in this case, the ones that we're looking at today, fourth gen uh, CPUs, so Intel CPUs. They're all going to be T variant um, processors, which means it's a efficient uh, desktop, which means it's going to be lower power. They're a 35 watt uh, TDP instead of a much higher, like 60 or 85 or 150 watts for you know a gaming PC or something. Uh, so they're going to be lower power which is why they can get them smaller and have a smaller fan on them, um, keep them cooler. Um, and so they're going to be lower power, but they still want to be efficient. So you, it, it really means you're going to get more power from this than like a laptop, but less than you know, obviously a gaming PC. So they're all T variant uh, processors. They're all fourth gen. They all have two RAM slots, uh, one SSD slot or one SATA connector that we can get to. And then they're going to have various USB and outputs. Most of them have display port, at least one display port. Some of these have two display ports and there's a little header right on the motherboard that lets you, you know, add a second one if there isn't one already. And uh, some have VGA output if you need that. Um, but other than that, it's basically just a, a tiny little PC uh, that we're going to try to get some fun out of. So now for the differences. So some of these are going to be um, the Core i5 V Pro or Core i5 non V Pro, and what that really means, the difference between those, it simply just means that um, in a corporate environment or in a business environment, you could have something manage all of these uh, easily. So the the V Pros would have some kind of corporate oversight over the all the computers. So you'll see these things a lot at you know banks or uh, car dealerships or something like that. Usually they're just Visa mounted right onto the back of a, a monitor. So they have a special bracket that just holds onto it, sticks it on the back of a monitor, uh, keeps it up out of the way. Sometimes they'll just be, you know, on the desk hidden away somewhere. But they're very tiny. They're very easy um, to manage. And 
that's all they really need at, at a, a place like that. Maybe a point of sale or something. They just need to run Windows or, you know, some software that's that's easy to run. They're not going to be gaming on it. So that's what we're starting with. Different uh, variants of the Core i5 in this case. And then we've got two different variants of the Core i7 over here. Now all the different numbers I'm going to be talking about with the processors, they're all going to sound similar and they can all get confusing. But at the end I'll have a chart that has not only the different specs, but all the different performances as I, I um, bench test each one of these. So we've got a Core i5 4570T and a Core i5 4590T. And then on the i7 side we've got an i7 4765T and then an i7 4785T. So like I said, they all sound very similar. They're either 45s or 47s. And then obviously the, the bigger number um, on the last part of it usually generally means that it's going to be a higher performance, higher cost, um, that kind of thing. All right, so if we take a look at this chart here, I've got the four processors listed across here at the top, starting at the basically slowest one going up to the fastest. And we can see all the specs that we're looking at. We're looking at cores, threads, base frequency, boost frequency, how much cache it has, and then the graphics base frequency and the max dynamic frequency. Even though all four of these share the same exact uh, GPU, basically integrated graphics for the same chips, um, there's a little slight difference. So let's take a look at these, starting with the i5-4570T. It has two cores and four threads, a base frequency of 2.9 gigahertz, boosts up to 3.6, a cache of four megabytes, and then we can see the graphics base frequency is 200 megahertz, and they can boost up to basically 1.15 gigahertz. Now jumping from the 4570 up to the 4590, still an i5, this one gives it four full cores with four threads. So getting those extra cores, um, we're going to lower the speed down a little bit to keep the power the same, but overall performance is going to be a little bit better, we're going to see. Six megabytes of cache, and then the, uh, this is the first one that jumps from the 200 megahertz up to 350 megahertz for the base graphics frequency, and then it boosts up to the same. Now moving over to the i7s, you can see we're starting right off with four cores and jumping up to eight threads. So we've got a two gigahertz base frequency, a three gigahertz boost frequency. We jump all the way up to eight megabytes of RAM, and then the graphics is basically the same. And then going all the way over to the 4785T, we still have four cores and four threads. That's basically the same. Basically, all we're doing is we're bumping up the uh, speed of the base frequency and the boost frequency. So you're getting another 200 megahertz each on both of those. Same amount of cache and then the same uh, frequencies for the graphics. So that's what it's looking like spec wise. Let's look on the next chart that shows overall performance difference. So for each of these computers, each of these processors, I used basically the same SSD drive. I used uh, 16 gigs of RAM, and basically the rest of the computer is the same. So the only thing that's changed is the processor between all of them. And I did a Geekbench 6 single core, the Geekbench 6 multi-core, and then the OpenCL, which is basically a simple graphics uh, benchmark. I wasn't too concerned about a graphics benchmark like doing a, a full 3D graphics benchmark because these are just integrated graphics and they're not that super anyways, but I did want to see if there was any difference on them based on those frequency differences that we saw in the, in the specs chart. So overall you can see with the single uh, core, they're very similar. There's a little bit of difference obviously going from the what I'll call the slowest up to the fastest. A little bit of difference in scores but not a huge difference. When we get into the multi-core, that's where you see the biggest difference, especially jumping from the 4570T up to the 4590T, and then even up from there, um, that, that, that multi-core score is gonna go up and up and up on each one. So even though these two are basically the same chip, just a 200 megahertz difference, we are still seeing a, a speed boost between the two. And then the OpenCL, this one really interests me because I was really curious about if any of them would, would be any different. And we do see a little bit of difference here before between the 4570T and the rest of them. And that may just be because of this right here, this 200 megahertz base frequency versus the 350 and all the other ones. 
So if we see that there is a jump, and then these are all very similar. This one on the 45 or the 4785T was definitely the clear winner, um, but I don't know if it would be obviously noticeable in, in any kind of eyeball of frames per second or something. So that's how the chart looks. All right, so hopefully all that information, the spec sheet and the, uh, the benchmarks for all of these uh, gave you a little bit of insight as to their performance. And uh, I'm not going to say that the performance on any one of these is going to be, you know, noticeably hugely different for most tasks. Um, but maybe you'll get a little bit better performance if you're going to do some retro gaming on some of the higher end systems um, with the faster i7s. Having all those more cores and threads, uh, it, it can't hurt, obviously. So price difference between all of these, like I said, if you go on eBay and you look for these, or if you find one locally, I'm guessing the price difference between the slowest one and the fastest one is going to be 5 10 15 bucks or something like that. There's a lot of companies that buy just a ton of these things, and uh, and they sell them in all different configurations. Uh, sometimes you can even do a little drop down on, on eBay and pick the one that you want. I try to find the ones that are, uh, you know, a large company selling a bunch of them that have them all individually listed because that way you can usually get a little bit better price on it. So I'll put an example down in the description below of, of an eBay listing that shows like where I got these. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Remember, I'm going to do another video that I'll have linked that will show how to uh, crack these things open and upgrade the parts. It's pretty simple, but the video will show you step by step how to do that. And then keep an eye out for another video where I'm actually going to hook these up and uh, set up some emulators and test out some uh, retro gaming. See how, how far up the, the spec sheet of different emulators that we can use with these. Um, because like I said, they do make a great little uh, computer. Either throw it on your desk and, and play with it, throw it up by, next to your TV and uh, grab yourself a, a wireless controller. Or these things, I see a lot of people taking these and putting them in the backs of like the arcade one-ups and modding their arcade one-ups to have, you know, lots of different kinds of, of games in them instead of just the six or seven that come with them. So keep an eye out for that video, and uh, and we'll do some uh, testing with the games. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, remember to hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff or you want to keep an eye out for those videos I talked about, then hit that subscribe button too. And thanks as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.